Our co-host today, New York Times best-selling author, the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Jenny, good morning. And uh, program notes, uh, yesterday I got a text from Colin. I don't know if you've seen this, uh, this video that's been produced by WVU. Uh, Colin, do you have a second to put your earphones on for just a moment there and uh, stop your recording for a second, if you could, to k- kick your feedback out, and then you can restart it before Mike Hornby starts to talk. But uh, there is a video produced by WVU, and it dealt with a particular player on their roster from Martinsburg High School who scored eight touchdowns in a state championship football game. And uh, Colin, take it from here. Yeah, hopefully no bad feedback here. No, you're good. Hudson Clement, uh, walk-on for WVU two seasons ago, got some playing time this year. Not only got some playing time, but uh, really impressed for the Mountaineers. It started in the game against Duquesne, in which he had three touchdowns in the uh, win and got a scholarship because of it and then went on to be one of the uh, best redshirt freshman wide receivers in the entire country with the numbers he put up. So as a result, WVU put out a little uh, 13-minute video about Hudson Clement, his family, his life in the Eastern Panhandle, and it was uh, put out on social media on Friday from WVU, and we reached out to them and requested permission to air it on TV10 for those that might not be able to access either Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatnot, so they uh, allowed us to do so. We haven't scheduled any exact times, but it will uh, begin Saturday and run all the way through Saturday. So all of next week we will be airing twice a day that uh, 13-minute video about Hudson Clement, the former Martinsburg Bulldog and now West Virginia Mountaineer football star. Very good. Thank you, Colin. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rob and John. Nicely done. And um, Delegate Mike Hornby joins us via telephone. Uh, Michael, that'll be a pretty cool thing for our audience to see on Channel 10. I've seen the video. I watched it on X, and it's it's moving, man. It, uh, it really gets you excited about the kid and what he did. Good morning to both of you. Yeah, I think that's uh, Colin informed me of that. I haven't watched the video yet, but I look forward to watching it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome, man. So we're yeah. down to our final couple of days here before you folks wrap yeah. it up, and I know there's some big Berkeley County news you want to share, some things that are coming up. Yeah, I mean, t- today's a huge day for Berkeley County. Um, impact fees, um, Height and I have, have worked that. we formed coalitions amongst the, uh, amongst the caucus, and I, I think we're, we're good to pass it today. Fingers crossed uh, that is going to be a huge uh, win for Berkeley County. Uh, big shout-out to Summer Barrett for her efforts uh, for that. Uh, yesterday we passed another bill for Berkeley County. He might not have said Berkeley County in it, uh, but it, it it redefines the word salvage yard, and, and it has some language in there, um, and that's going to result in a $50 million investment into northern Berkeley County. I can't go into too much details on the actual company, but it is a big win for Berkeley County. We've, we've got a lot of good things passed, um, and, of course, the, uh, the uh, trash bill that I ran past, too, so that's huge for Apple Valley, for Waste Management, and for Insoga. All right, so uh, I know how the deal works when you're recruiting a new company into an area. You can't talk about who the company is and whatever, but can you can you describe what they do, what they will be doing? Yeah, so it's, it's a Fortune 500 company. What they do is they take um, insurance-wrecked cars. So let's say a car has been uh, written off by the insurance company. Well, they take possession of the car. Uh, the person gets paid out, um, but they have this car. So instead of it going to a salvage yard, it would go to this company, which is a uh, within a building, kind of like an Amazon building, um, and they would take that car and they would take it down to nothing um, um, and take the parts that are still good, and they would repurpose the parts and sell them um, on their platform, um, nationwide, and then the excess steel is now going to go to our new um, steel uh, producing facility in North Berkeley too. So, huge win for Berkeley County. Um, the company is going to be putting about fifty million dollars into Northern Berkeley County. So, Mike, does that mean they come in and construct a large facility and then hire a bunch of people to work inside the facility? Is that, that the is exactly right? And what did you have to change in the law or the code to enable this to happen? 
So it, it, it's very specific, and you know me, I'm not, I'm not a rocket science, so um, the lawyers explained to me it was, was it within code that they couldn't do this um, under the current salvage yard um, laws. So we had to change some specific words to create a piece of code that would fit their business. So as so that so this was this so they wouldn't have to be a salvage yard. Gotcha. So this bill basically was driven by a company that spotted a piece of land in a business that already exists and said, you know, we can convert it into this if you basically change this in the code. Yes, exactly. So gotcha. and, and the, you know the governor's office was an integral part in doing this. I got to thank Daryl Coles for bringing this to our attention. Uh, we used a Senate vessel to get it across, but. Um, it, 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 again, it came through GovOrg, and I think, you know, I've always said, you know, it's the relationships down here, and I think Height and I have built a lot of relationships with the Southern Coalition, um, and, and we're starting to see that hate for the Eastern Panhandle start to drop. <laughs> uh, I had heard, uh, I can't remember who it was we had on earlier in the week, they gave the two of you an awful lot of credit in terms of uh, kind of whipping some votes on this one here, so you do get some love on that. And in regards to the code changing, uh, does the state have to fork over any money to make this happen? No. Uh, I don't believe there is any money or incentive, so there's no taxpayer dollars going. This, this was a strictly, hey, if, we, if you guys can change your code, we will make this investment in West Virginia. All right. Mr. Gilstrap. You, you mentioned something about impact fees. What is that? Yes. So uh, in Berkeley County, or in the whole of West Virginia, you cannot have impact fees. Uh, impact fee is put onto new development um, without zoning. And we've been complaining for years and years and years that we can't have impact fees. Well, within that um, section of code for impact fees, there are a lot of parameters that you have to meet. You have to be a, a, a very high growth county. You have to have uh, – your commission has to have a lot of things in place to, to get that. But in order to do it, you have to have zoning. So this bill simply – and we'll vote – it's on third reading today. This bill simply removes the zoning piece out. Um, and, and Height and I have been working uh, in, in – I'll uh, give Summer uh, Barrett some credit, too, because she's, she's been a huge help. Um, we have really explained that this will really only impact Berkeley County. Berkeley County, maybe in a few years, Montegalia County might want to do this. Um, but the people of Berkeley County really want this. It, it's, it's, it's to maybe, maybe just start to catch up on some of the things that because of our growth and the amount of uh, houses that we have coming in, developments coming in, um, our county commission now has the ability to, to reap some of those rewards. And typically, how, how are the impact fees calculated? Is it per acre? Well, or is it I mean, it's basically based on a building. So it, this just simply gives our county commission the ability to create this uh, impact fee. How they do it, uh, you know, is up to them. Uh, and and the, the the folks back home can, can ask the commission how you know, what they decide. But I'm sure Eddie and uh, the gang down there will, will make uh, good decisions and uh, come up with a plan for how they think it would best work. And are there guardrails on this that it has to be spent for infrastructure, roads? There are, well, there are no um, – they would have to create those guardrails. We're just giving a little bit of home rule to, to, to Berkeley County. And I think we, we've heard for a long time from, from the citizens as well as the commission that this was a, a thing they wanted um, – for whatever reason, we've never been able to get it across the finish line or, or you know, in this form. And uh, I'm very proud of the work we've done, the, the session for that. Chris Chernick posted, uh, Summer posted the bill, and then Chris Chernick posted the language from it uh, in regards to the salvage yard bill, Mike, that dates yeah. back to 1931 as amended, related generally to salvage yards, providing definition for regional distribution and dismantling center, and providing for specialized regional distribution and dismantling license in certain circumstances. And that's the adjustment that you had to make to get yeah. the business done up by, what is that, Ernie Salvage Yard? Is that the, the property area up there? 
on a uh, I believe it, uh, and again, don't quote me because I'm not read in on uh, any of these uh, things, but uh, from what my understanding, I believe it is something to do with repurposing that uh, facility. Yeah. Okay. It's a drive up. You can't miss it as you drive 11 on the. You uh, can't miss it, but now you're going to see side. a beautiful building instead of a bunch of cars. <laughs> Okay, uh, what's uh, on on the deadline here? The last couple of days, Mike, what might get passed or is close to passing that you uh, have been working on or are particularly interested in? So, my computer science um, uh, requirement for graduation is on second reading in the Senate. That passed out of education. I'm super excited about that. Computer science is the future of jobs in West Virginia. Our biggest uh, export is our kids. And if we can educate our kids in the future um, in, in computer science and coding and things like that, we might be able to keep some of our kids. Um, with all the economic development that the state is doing, we got, we're going to have a ton of high-paying jobs in those fields. Um, so I'm really excited that that bill's uh, making it across the finish line. Uh, Senator Grady helped me out with that a lot on, on the Senate side. Um, I'll give kudos to Charlie Trump a little bit. He got my raw milk um, bill across, Freedom Bill, if you want to buy it. So that's on second reading in the Senate. Um, I'm really excited. You know, last year I only got one piece of actual legislation passed, and I think I'm going to get about five this year. So, What else you got, sir? Um, there's a hundred bills on second. There's there's so much stuff going on right now that the Senate is doing what they're doing, that they're amending in all kinds of things on their end, um, and, and that the horse trading is starting to go on right now. So um, this is the exciting part of, of of the week. These last three days are awesome for me because I like to be in every conversation that I can, and mm -hmm. uh I'm excited to see what we can get past. HB 50, sorry, John, HB 5294, this is one of the booze bills. I, th I think it's one of the items I discussed with Delegate Clark. It covers yeah. how breweries, distilleries, and farm wineries sell and give away samples on and off-site, among other things. It passed the Senate and is heading back to you guys, where I presume you'll be signing it into law. Well, you'll yeah, be passing believe, it on to the governor. Um, we're going to send it to the governor. I don't think they changed too much on the Senate side. I haven't talked to Wayne today. Um, but it will be coming across in Senate messages today. That's the dual license uh, bill. I think we're, we're good to go. Will this bill be strong enough to put West Virginia wineries on equal footing with Virginia and Maryland wineries in Pennsylvania? No, I think it'll bring us up to that level. I don't think we're still very um, behind in the times when it comes to alcohol sales and wineries and things like that. As long as our Constitution says we can't sell it, in my opinion, we're still behind them. Um, let's talk about the $400 million elephant in the room. It's clawback or not clawback. Um, as I understand it, the $400 million goes away. $465 million. $465 million goes away if we spend $465 million. So were we caught well, being cheap in the areas no. of, of education? So, John, I think what people need to understand is this is – the federal government gave directly to every county board of education this money, $465 million across the state. So every county board of education got this money. Um, they gave it to them. They said, hey, you need to spend it on you know, HVAC. They gave them a bunch of parameters. So these counties went ahead and started spending the money. Um, well, then they changed, the feds changed the rules 11 times over the last two years. Um, and every time they moved the goalpost or did something, it could potentially put some of these counties into a position where maybe the money, you know, they spent it on HVAC. Well, what kind of HVAC? Maybe they got or they spent it on um, COVID prevention measures or something like that. So there could be, and I don't, there's no way the state is going to, give back $465 million, let's just be honest. So, But what we're doing, or well, the governor's office is really the one doing it, is negotiating with the Fed saying, listen, here's what we've done. We've spent X amount of money on our uh, school building authority. We just appropriated $150 million towards that school building authority. Um, and we wiped the list clean of everything that the schools asked for. So every building um, 
project has been now approved and funded that has been across across the state that was on the books uh we have also funded our ecats our, our our aids for first and second and third grade so we put money towards that and appropriate money towards that um we are also and again this is still in negotiation we're, we're giving a five percent raise to teachers and uh so all that money adds up to fulfilling what we did. It's not the legislature's or the governor's uh, uh, misspending or the Board of Education's misspending. The county BOEs spent the money, but the rules changed 11 times. So this is now a negotiation between the governor and, and the feds to say, listen, this is how we've done it. I don't think this is as big of an issue as uh, some people are making it and the, and the left is proposing. They keep saying it's the state BOE and the governor's office. None of that is true at all. So is it the explanation and the negotiation, is that for money that has already been allocated and spent? Or is already. this... Okay, so this isn't... It, this isn't the spend, spending and allocation is not triggered by the so-called no. clawback. This is this is so. If you took the fifty-five counties, all of them got money based on the amount of kids they have, or whatever formula or population they had. They appropriated the money and spent it. In most cases, in almost all cases, they spend it appropriately because it's federal money. Um, this is the governor and the. Um, and the feds saying, hey, how did they spend it? And now the governor's having to come in and say, listen, this is what we've done. So I, I think there's as much to do about nothing. It, it, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to work out, especially because what the legislature's done in appropriating these funds so that we can say, look, even at the state level, we've spent this money. Do we have a feel for how many other states got this same memo? There are um, a majority of states that um, are having the same issue because the rules changed 11 times. You can't you can't say one day, hey, you can spend on this, and then you know six months later, once mo money's been appropriated, now you, now you say, hey, the, uh, well, we're changing the rule. You can you can do this, or you can't do that. So, Mike, know. are you are you certain there will be a teacher raise? The Senate Finance Chairman Eric Tarr doesn't seem as enthusiastic about it as you House members are. Um, well, I mean, we just passed the um, the budget bill yesterday, and we, our version had it in. We used the Senate vessel. Um, you know, it, it, Vern, Chris, and Eric Tarr are working that out. I truly believe we are going to stick to our guns in the House, and we're going to make sure this uh, this race happens. All right. Uh, anything else that uh, is coming across the finish line, one way or the other, you're aware of, we should know about? Oh, well, there's oh, so much. Uh, uh, but I, you know, I can't really we'd be here all day. There's so oh, many bills. I, I know what I asked so you about. so much that can hey, happen. Hey, the, uh, the, the, the transfer, the, uh, I'm sorry, the... Uh, Eight thirteen. The bill, the bill that would allow kids to play club sports the same yeah. year as they would play varsity sports, that died in the. Well, it, it wasn't run, Rob. So it was the, the last on the agenda for the education committee yesterday. Um, we did not get to it. Um, we got hung up on the discipline bill for about two and a half hours, and I effectively upset the Democrats yesterday, um, and they're not very happy with me. What'd you do? Um, I moved the question and stopped the conversation and sent it to the floor. I so, you know, I was done with the conversation at that point. I was trying to get to uh, 813 and, and some other bills that we're going with. with this is, that was our last education meeting. Um, so we had spent two and a half hours debating, and I was ready to get some more bills to the floor, and we can debate on the floor. Are any of those discipline bills going to, or the main one going to make it through? Yeah, it's 614, made it through, and is, is going to first reading today. Um, 813 is the, the bill you were talking about for sports. Unless um, you know, do a horse trading or whatever the leadership's doing, unless the, that's like a priority bill for the Senate, I think it's dead, but you never know. We could get called up to committee at any time and say, run that bill. We need it forward to trade with this bill. Um, that's kind of how it's working now. Um, the Senate is saying, hey, you killed these bills. And the House is saying, oh, you killed these bills. So we negotiate those. I, I know I worked really hard to get the moonshine bill back on the Senate. 
um, yesterday. Uh, Doug Smith, uh, one of the Southern delegates, has been working on that, and it, it kind of never got run. And I, I feel like I got to fight for him. So um, they ran the, the moonshine bill out of Governor Org, and um, that that is on second reading in the Senate today too. Combined with the raw milk bill, that is the white Russian bill, right? That is, it's, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Will will the Social Security tax break bill uh, eventually get signed by the governor, Mike? I think so. I, I, don't, I mean, I think we we made it pretty fiscally uh, conservative. It's, it's over three years. Um, it's not everything the governor wanted all at once, but it moves us in the right direction. Is there anything that you've uh, seen? I know this is not your committee, but in regards to child welfare out of the old foster care system, is there any? thing that you're aware of that's going to help that situation this term. Yeah, I think uh, Adam Burkhammer has, uh, I think he, he has three bills. I think one is going to make it to the finish line, will really help. It's, uh, and I'm not super sure on the, the details, but it's basically a computer or internet system that's going to help uh, foster parents, uh, the foster system, all be able to communicate, be able to look at child's records, things like that. So it's not you having to chase information from different departments. It's all available within this one, uh, I want to say website or computer uh, or however, yeah, I'd say website. Uh, but Adam's been working really hard on that. Um, and I think we're, we have the votes to get that through. And I think the Senate's going to get that through, too. All right. Uh, in anything else involving Berkeley County? Um, well, the, the the trash bill um, was huge, so I think that that's good. Um, there are a number of other ones. The um, the one that I can think of is the municipalities being able to um, shut off your water if you haven't paid your stormwater. I think that was a good win. I think that's going to make it through to the finish line. Uh, and that specifically came from Berkeley County. I think that was John Hardy's bill. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. And then, of course, there are a number of agriculture bills that would really help Berkeley County, too. Are any of the unemployment law changes going to make it through? Um, I know unemployment is on the docket. So um, we passed a version that's 24 weeks. It does raise the employer's uh, premium this year or when it goes into effect, but then it caps it. So as a business owner, I understand my, my unemployment insurance has gone up every single year for the last eight years. Well, now it's capped. So yes, it will go up just a, just a hair, but it's capped and it, it's a 24 week um, thing. You'll get paid um, for the first 12 weeks, a sliding scale. So it'll go down every two weeks. Uh, there's a small carve out for um, unions in there that if they're actively looking for a job, they can they can still do it. So I think it's a good compromise, mm -hmm. uh, Bill. I still think it's way too long, but you know that's me as a business owner. I think it was affected by the two plants and the massive layoffs, Mike. Don't you? I, I do, and 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 I, I've got to tell people the. These are, Cleveland Cliffs out in Weirton is facing, you know, because of the Biden administration and the, the, the federal uh, stuff is, is why they've announced that thing. Now, there have been no jobs lost yet, um, and I don't think there will be for at least a year. Um, and if administrations change, that could change. Now, the Allegheny Wood Products out in, uh, I think it's Hardy, uh, Pendleton County, um, I believe... This is more to do with them. The, the county itself was limiting that, their growth, and I believe this is them trying to sell, and I think there's some corporate stuff going on there. So I don't believe we're going to lose all those jobs. All right. Uh, you have to get running off to a meeting? Uh, we go on the floor in uh, about one minute. All right. I'll let you go, man. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for your time. Take All care. right. They're around there, they call him Delegate Mike Hornby. Around here, we just call him the boss.